So after the presentation from uh, Vicente on the dark side of uh, sulfur compounds, let's move on the bright side, uh, where uh, sulfur containing compounds that uh, contribute positively to the, to the wine aroma. Amongst all the positive sulfur containing compounds, uh, you know that three uh, aroma compounds are well uh, studied for years because of their very potent uh, odorant uh, power. Uh, those compounds are the so-called varietal thiols, the 4-MMP, 4-Mercapto, 4-Methylpentantuon with box tree and blackcurrant bud uh, scent, the 3-MH, 3-Mercapto hexanol, grapefruit and patient fruit uh, odors, and its acetates, the 3-MHA, with patient fruit odors. Those compounds have been identified in several uh, white, rosé, and even red wines. Uh, you have some variety uh, that have been uh, identified in. Uh, but also, we have noticed that uh, those compounds are present in other uh, products. Alcoholic beverage, like beer, and from hops in this case, cider, and also in fruit juices, like tropical fruit juices. What is the contribution to those uh, compounds to the aroma uh, of the wine, the global uh, aroma profile? I give you here the example, uh, a case of study on New Zealand Sauvignon, uh, where the research team um, investigated the contribution of three compounds, two thions, 3-MHA and 3-MH, which are very abundant in these wines, and also the 3 isobutyl methoxypyrazine the bell paper uh, responsible uh, aroma compounds for their contribution to modulate the aroma profile of the wine. And uh, they proof that 3-MHA was responsible for the tropical fruit notes of the Sauvignon, Sauvignon wines, whereas for the patient fruit note, a very pleasant uh, note, uh, you must have uh, 3MH, 3MHA, and even uh, the pyrazine for the green note of this uh, particular fruit. And obviously, pyrazine is responsible for the green note of asparagus and also bell pepper in this kind of wines. In other wines, like in Provence uh, Rosé wine, where thiols at a much lower uh, level, we um, identify an interaction between thiols and ester, and the ratio between the balance between uh, thiols, 3-MHA and 3-MH, and uh, esters, fermentative ester level, could explain three of the four uh, aroma profiles that are uh, distinguished in the, uh, in the um, Rosé, uh, Rosé de Provence. In the classical uh, Rosé wine, you have high level of esters and low level of thiols with the typical fermentative and uh, amylic uh, profile. When uh, with uh, the grape origin and the convenient uh, winemaking techniques, you succeed in having high level of esters in comparison to high level of thiols, sorry, in comparison to esters. You, you have the appearance of the thiolic notes with box tree, green, grapefruit uh, notes. And what is very interesting is that with a good balance between thiols and esters, uh, this balance is responsible for the most appreciated uh, aroma profile for rosé wines, that is to say the tropical fruit uh, aroma profile. So it's very interesting to have, but very difficult, we will see it after, to have this good balance between the two families of uh, compounds. 
In terms of biogenesis, uh, you already know that those thiols are not present in grapes as free form, but as precursors, different families of precursors, and all those precursors are cleaved, liberated by the yeast during the fermentation. Uh, the first precursors identified were uh, the cysteinylated conjugate, then the glutathionylated conjugate, and recently we identified also D-peptides derived from uh, glutathionylate, uh, from glutathion, that are conjugate to 3MH and 4MMP. There is also uh, another way. Uh, throughout the uh, unsaturated C6 compounds that uh, give rise to 3MH during fermentation. Those precursors are responsible for the formation only of 4MMP and 3MH, and for the 3MHA, it's the classical acetylation by the yeast that is responsible of the conversion from the alcohol to the acetates. This conversion is very important in terms of aroma because it changes the aroma profile from grapefruit to patient fruit, but also because of the uh, increase in aromatic intensity because of the lower uh, perception threshold of uh, A3MH in comparison to 3MH. Uh, A3MH, in fact, is 15 times more powerful than 3MH, and to give you a concrete idea of the potency of the compound, uh, you need only 20 drops of the pure A3MH in order to transform the water of an Olympic swimming pool into uh, patient fruit juices. So very potent aroma compound. You have to eliminate the chlorine before because it's not uh, possible. What are the, the importance of the different pathways uh, for the formation, in this case, of 3MH? Uh, we, we have told of cysteinylated, glutathionylated conjugates with, for this, uh, this kind of compounds, uh, aldehyde form and SO2 adducts. And recently, we identified the gamma glucis and cisgly uh, 3MH and we have also the C6 compounds uh, pathway. If we have a look of the uh, percentage uh, of origin, you can see that uh, the major part of uh, 3MH is formed by cysteinylated or glutathionylated uh, precursors, but uh, deep peptides has other roles and even uh, exenal and exenol could play a role in the formation. But if we sum up all the percentage, we reach only 40, 45%, so a large part of 3MH origin uh, is still un unexplained and uh, need to be investigated. Whatever, with those different uh, form, we have good markers of the aromatic potential of grape and must uh, before fermentation. Um, when we speak about cleavage, in fact, we speak about two mechanisms, different mechanisms. The cleavage is uh, performed by the yeast, but it's only an internal enzymatic activity. So uh, for this reaction, the yeast has to intake uh, to uptake the, um, the precursors into the cell, and the, so the first reaction is the, uh, the entrance of the precursors into the yeast with the role of different transporter and many regulation on this transporter. And the second step of the cleavage is the cleavage it, itself with uh, several genes that have been identified and two main genes for the final uh, cleavage step that, is, that are ER7 for 4MMP and STR3 for 3MH. And again, we have those genes, but also all the regulation of the uh, expression during the fermentation that 
uh, are key points in the thyroid revelation. In terms of transport, the first uh, transport way uh, identified was uh, the general amino permease that is able to transport cysteine conjugate into the yeast. And this transport is well known to be uh, repressed uh, by the presence of ammonia in excess by, throughout the uh, nitrogen catabolic uh, repression. So uh, we will see after that uh, uh, nitrogen nutrition is very important in terms to ensure a good transport of uh, the precursors into the cells. For the glutathionylated conjugates, OPT1 seems to be the uh, major transporter, but uh, some other transporter, like FOT1 and FOT2, are also involved. And for the deep peptides, we are thinking about the small peptide transporter, like DL5 and PTR2. Uh, that can be involved in the transportation of the, the precursors. So a very complex panorama, and in addition, we can also have a secretion of those um, precursors, especially the glutathion one, throughout the JEX1 transporter, which is responsible for the uh, balance of glutathion and the redox balance uh, due to the presence of glutathione uh, in the cell, uh, in the yeast cell. Uh, the problem with uh, those complex transport step is that we didn't, we haven't many clues on the regulation, except for gap, uh, gap one, and of the yeast diversity uh, for this, uh, the presence of all those uh, transporter. So it could be a very important uh, step and a very limited step in order to have an efficient cleavage of cells during fermentation. Uh, to what extent can we uh, control uh, the cell release? Uh, my presentation will speak uh, on a global uh, control. Uh, indeed, as for all the varietal cells, those compounds are present as precursors in grapes, and all the work uh, begins in the vineyards. After that, pre-fermentative fermentation play a key role. Fermentation condition, obviously, with the yeast cleavage, are essential. And as um, Vicente present, Sciols are very reactive uh, species, so all the post-fermentative uh, condition, especially oxygen dissolution, uh, can be very uh, important in order to preserve the release sciols. In terms of uh, vineyards, two main factors have been investigated. The date of harvest, we have very inconsistent uh, results. Uh, normally, winemakers consider that early harvests are uh, favorable for cereals in the wines, but in fact, it depends on the pedoclimatic condition of the area. And I give you a counter example. Uh, it's uh, on, the, on the left, you can see that in this area, that is to say southwestern France, late harvest give always wines with a high level of cereals, but it's a very rainy uh, area, quite cold and rainy area. Uh, the other aspect uh, is the um, water status of the wine, and in this case, uh, some consistent results that indicate that a moderate uh, water stress is more favorable to the accumulation, especially for 4-MMP. Other uh, mean in order to uh, pilot the contents of cereals in the wine, but 
starting working in the, in the vineyard is the fertilization and the nitrogen fertilization. And indeed, even if the um, most used technique is uh, fertilization in soils, we consider that uh, for foliar nitrogen spraying could be a very efficient technique because it's a versatile technique. And you can see here that these techniques, that is to say spraying urea at the v time, uh, is very uh, interesting in order on the left graph to increase uh, the yen of the grapes. And consequently, you also increase and uh, with a high increase, we are five, seven times higher, you increase the sales in the corresponding wines. So a very potent tool in order to increase uh, the sales. What is the, uh, the mechanism of this, uh, this effect? In fact, we not systematically identify an increase in terms of precursors level, but what we identify is a change in the uh, nitrogen ratio in the yen. Uh, that is to say that uh, urea, foliar nitrogen spraying, favors uh, the accumulation of amino acids in the grapes and in comparison to ammonia. So you change the balance between uh, amino acids and ammonia in the yen. After harvest, uh, you have normally succeed in having high level of uh, precursors in your grape. The first step is to be able to extract them. Those precursors, are, as many precursors are present in the skin uh, of the berries, and you can see here the difference between the, the different uh, precursor variety, the repartition between skin and pulp. So all the, uh, the operations that can favor the, the extraction of uh, skin components into the juice during the mass elaboration are for very favorable to the, the soil contents of the wine. In, in these uh, techniques, skin uh, maceration, of course, and also the use of uh, extraction enzymes in order to speed up the diffusion mechanism. The other uh, very important uh, step uh, in the pre-fermentative operation is linked to the uh, must elaboration and to the oxidation uh, during uh, the pressing. You know uh, well the uh, major reaction occurring uh, during must oxidation, and that is responsible for the must browning. That is to say, the oxidation of uh, hydroxynamic uh, acid, mainly cathartic acid, by PPO and oxygen. That leads to the formation of quinones. And those compounds are very reactive and enters in a chain reaction, uh, leading to the formation of brown pigment. Uh, in this pattern, glutathione plays a key role because it's a trap uh, order to block the crinon uh, and to, to block the, the further oxidation reaction, uh, leading to the uh, so called grape reaction product. Glutathione is also responsible, and we will see some highlights on it, uh, and the residual glutathione after the major uh, reaction uh, is also able to add onto hexenal form in all the mast uh, by uh, oxidation of uh, unsaturated lipid. And this addition lead to the glutathionylated 3MH. So you could you could increase the potential, uh, the thiol potential, if you are able to preserve some uh, glutathione in your mast.
And of course, the residual glutathione is also important because it's one of uh, one determinant of the level of glutathione in your uh, future wine. The reaction between uh, glutathione and hexenal is detailed here. It's a simple addition, and after a reduction step, you, uh, you have the, the real uh, thiol precursors. Here, in simple terms, uh, in the reality, we uh, observe this uh, increase in uh, glutathione. Uh, in comparison, uh, in comparing uh, traditional and inert gas pressing, you can see that uh, in terms of cystenylated uh, precursors, we didn't see any difference between the two types of pressing system. But in terms of glutathionylated precursors, you can see that for the two last uh, experiments, where we perform for the inert gas a totally inert pressing, uh, you can see that in this case, we uh, have lower level of G3MH in the inert gas system than in the traditional system. That is to say that the traditional system, it was a pneumatic press, uh, not a low temperature grape, so traditional but very well controlled. Um, in this case, the moderate oxidation, oxidation that occurs in the traditional pre, uh, press system is favorable to the uh, thiol pre precursors. Always uh, in the prefermentative operation, cold stabilization of the mast, you know that uh, this uh, is stabilization and not uh, stabilization. So the storage of the mast on the lees for weeks, and we observe always that there is an increase of 3MH and 4MMP the wines. Even we, we are not able to see any increase with the, uh, in the precursors we are able to measure. So we, we haven't the explication, the explanation of this increase, but it's systematically observed. So a very potent tool in order to defer the fermentation, uh, but also to increase the, the aromatic quality of the wine. Obviously, fermentation is the key step because it is the step uh, where occur the, the cleavage, different ability of the yeast to release thiols. You know that uh, not, uh, the yeast are not all uh, equal in terms of uh, thiol release. And also an effect of the temperature. Uh, high temperature are uh, favorable to the release of thiols. Uh, high temperature are uh, 18, 20 degrees for white uh, winemaking. Uh, in terms of yeast, we uh, usually distinguish uh, two types of yeast. The releaser yeast that are able to have a very good yield in terms of cleavage and produce high level of 3MH and 4MMP. And here you can see that even with high uh, release uh, yeast, we can have uh, differences between uh, 3MH and 4MMP ability. So uh, 4MMP, it's a very specific uh, reaction and very few yeasts are able to release high level of uh, 4MMP. What is very important also is to convert the, um, the um, a3MH, the 3MH into A3MH, and yeast is even uh, obviously able to do it with different ability. You have here the ratio. And what is very interesting is that blend of yeast can have a synergic effect in order to increase the uh, ratio between A3MH and uh, 3MH and uh, to produce very uh, aromatic, intense uh, wines. Nutrition, very quickly, 
we have seen that uh, ammonium is responsible of an inhibition of the entrance of precursors into the yeast. And you can see here experiments uh, that show this uh, me mechanism, the addition of ammonium at the beginning of the fermentation lower drastically the uh, 3MH uh, release. So it's uh, very important for nutrition to afford to the yeast, to provide to the yeast organic nutrition and at the very beginning, uh, at the very beginning of the fermentation. After fermentation, thiols are very reactive, three way of degradation. Uh, complexation with uh, copper and iron. Uh, a non reversible way, that is to say, the addition on, of thiols onto quinones. It's not a direct oxidation, but an addition on an oxidation product. And the direct oxidation uh, of uh, thiols into disulfides. This, is, this reaction is a reversible reaction that can be reversed uh, depending on, on the redox uh, of the wine. So it could be considered uh, that thiols and uh, disulfides are an aromatic reserve that can be mo mobilizable uh, during uh, wine aging. You have obviously different tools in order to avoid the different, um, the different degradation and loss of thiols. One of the most important or trendy in this time is the addition of glutathione throughout pure compounds or uh, uh, yeast derivates. That, in fact, is a competitor in terms of addition to the other thiols and that preserve thiols from the addition onto quinones. What is also important, and Michel Moutounet uh, talked about this reaction, is that uh, beside oxidation, you have also hydrolysis, and uh, hydrolysis of H3MH is very important. Uh, the only tool very efficient is temperature and storage temperature, but we observe also that the use of manoproteins uh, could also have the same uh, effect than storage for months at low temperature. And you can see here the, uh, the amplitude of preservation of a 3 mh throughout the addition of manoproteins. It's in the same order of magnitude than a storage for one, years, one year at uh, four degrees. To conclude, a very complex uh, pattern in the and the multifactorial process uh, starting in the vineyard to pilot thiols. The things you have to, the take home message is all along this process, all the lights must be on green. Uh, and uh, if you have one step wrong, you have the risk to annihilate all the effort made uh, previously. Nitrogen yeast and yeast strain are very strong impact factors. Uh, and it's um, also very difficult to, to have uh, a good balance between cyan and easters in the wines. So, uh, because we have uh, some antagonist effect in, uh, in control factors. So, Keep in mind that blending remains the ultimate and finest tool to, to adapt the wine to the, pro, the market. But for, uh, to have success in blending, you must have very different wine and so favor uh, the formation of one family in one tank, one aroma, uh, another aroma family in the other tank in order to, to have the Mm, all the possibility of formulation uh, for your different market. Thank you very much.